have to love the faith and the courage of Abraham. Here he is, knowing that Sodom and Gomorrah are these terrible, wicked places. And yet, he entreats God, Lord, if I can only find at least 50, you will, you will forbear destroying the city. And God says, of course I will. And then he goes through this wonderful, you know, this progression. 50, 45, 40, 30, 20, until he finally gets to 10. And God tells Abraham, I will forbear it even for 10. And the left unsaid part of the scripture is this. God would have forbear or bore destroying Sod and Gomorrah for one. For one faithful person, one believer, God would have forbear destroyed that city. Great story. The story that we hear from Jesus is a is a remarkable one, is it not? You know, we start by hearing, you know, Master, teach us to pray as the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. And it's not that the Baptists had some special prayer that they wanted Jesus to emulate. It's that in that time, the Baptist and his followers had special prayers that they used that identified themselves as one of the followers of the Baptist. And essentially what we hear in the gospel is the disciples saying, hey, Jesus, how about our special prayers? How about our prayers that identify us as your followers? And instead of Jesus saying, I'm going to tell you what the group prayer is, he gives us this wonderful, beautiful, what can we call it other than love song from Jesus? It is the Our Father. And, and I like Luke's version. You know, Matthew has a, has a version of the Our Father that we hear all the time, and we say it all the time. Luke's version is shorter. It is more concise. I, I sometimes think perhaps Matthew's was used more in worship when Matthew wrote his scripture. But Luke teaches us in such a simple way about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Because when we hear what Luke says, what he tells us is this formulation from Jesus that starts as all things must start with the Father. And you know, in those days, calling God, any name was a crime against the faith. In Judaism, you could not speak the name of the Lord. If you did, surely you would not. But Jesus turns all of that on its head. And Jesus asks us, not only to pray to God, but to pray to God, not only in name, but as Father, as Abba. God loves us as a father loves his children, and we are his children. Jesus follows up giving us those words with the formulations that are so wonderful. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Seek, and you will find. Well, what are we supposed to seek? If, if you know your scriptures, 
Seek first the righteousness of God. But there is something more that we need to, to see, especially in today's world. Because, my sisters and brothers, the reality is we are living in a time where there is darkness all around us. We know what it is. There is darkness around us. Those who call what is evil good and good evil. Probably the best and easiest example of, of this is there are those in our society who would tell you that a woman's right to choose to, to kill her child is something that is good. But we know that it is darkness. And we have to differentiate the light from the darkness. And we have to make sure that we don't call darkness light. How do we do it? We do it through our holy church, our mother, who explains to us what Jesus intended for us to do. Seek and you will find, you will find the life that is Christ. Ask and you will receive. You know, a lot of times people are confused about this. I've heard people many times say, I asked God for X and he didn't give it to me. He didn't answer my prayer. My sisters and brothers, the Lord answers every prayer, but sometimes the answer is no. Ask, and you will receive. Knock, and the door will be open to you. You know, this is, this is really the one that is a sticking point for us, especially in our relationships, because if we have been hurt, if we think we've been disrespected, if we think someone has sinned against us, we, we wall ourselves off. We cut ourselves out of the lives of others. And what God asks of us, what Jesus intends for us, is that we are always willing to knock on the door. Always willing in humility, in charity, and in love to approach those who are in need. Which is a perfect segue for what is going to happen here today for our Knights of Columbus, the installation of our officers. The Knights, of course, have been around for a hundred and some years, right? long time, and the one thing that we know about the Knights is that throughout the decades, they have been faithful to the precepts and the teachings of our church. And especially, especially now, where we are so needy to receive inspiration and guidance from the men in our lives. It is a wonderful and wondrous gift that we receive from the Knights. Because they show us that men can be leaders in the church. That men can be vulnerable in the church and serve those who need to be served. And that they can form together in community to worship the Lord Jesus. May the praise be to 